Hey everyone, my name is Pritam and you're watching Tech with Pri. Welcome to my channel and I'm back with another exciting technical video. And this is the second video of our newly created technical series, which is the ServiceNow developer, where we are learning the ServiceNow development. And especially we are preparing for the certified application developer, which is the CAD examination, right? So we have already done the CSA exam preparation video. Virtual agent is done. System administrator is done. Now service now development, the most important one and the most crucial one. Okay, so we will learn step by step. So this is the second video. In the first video, you have already seen that I have explained, uh, you know, what are the things we are going to do throughout this series? What are the playlists that we are going to uh, create for the, uh, for the CAD examination or the service now development? And very importantly, what are the benefits for the member that would be added? right so all those things has been discussed uh, in my previous video so if you miss that video don't worry i'm going to put the link in the description also you can find the link here on your screen right so let's see what we are going to learn from today's class all right so we would start our service now development journey by understanding what is an api that's very very uh, important one you have to understand this uh, to learn further about you know the server side and client side api okay and next we would see how api works with example so i'm going to show you how uh, it is working with very basic level example not related to service now uh, but normal example that you use uh, on daily basis right all i want is that you clear your concept and then we move forward and we would explore then about service now api then we would see what are the service now api what type of service now api we have and then we would see client side api and server side api so make sure you watch the full video understand each and every concept again this is a series uh, that i've started so you have to watch uh, step by step all the videos and for any questions you can always ask me in the comment section so let's start the video so what is an api so api stands for application programming interface and it says like it's a mechanism api is a mechanism by which two different application can talk to each other using set of definitions right so that's very very important here so now you might be thinking how two different application can talk to each other i mean how it is possible like so this is where the api comes in place so we would understand this with the help of an example so this is very popular Uber application that you, most of the people uh, are watching the video, they have it in their phone. Uh, in India, we also have Ola service, right? So let's talk about the Uber. So now in Uber, what do you need to do? So first the location from where you are booking actually that most of the time automatically takes from your device location if it's turned on, right? And the destination you have to put like where you are going to travel by Uber, right? And after putting the source and destination, you get to see a map. Uh, maybe your car is booked. Okay. And you see the map. That's the most important thing. And in the map, you'd be able to see where your driver is right now, how much time it would take. Okay. And all the location details, like what you see in a map, right? So all these things you are able to see. Now the question is, did Uber create this whole mapping system for their application? The answer is no. They have not created that, but they are using just the Google map service that we have. We know the most popular mapping application that again, all of our phone has, doesn't matter. It's an iPhone or Android phone. So we all have the Google map. It's very, very important. So wherever we are going, we are searching for some location. We use a lot, right? So this Google map service is used by the Uber in their application and that's how two different application, one is Uber, one is Google map and connected with each other. Now still it's confusing how Uber is using the Google map service. So definitely when Uber started, so they approached to Google, right? Because without approaching them, they cannot take the Google map service or something like that, right? It's a property of Google. So they asked for Google like, Hey, I want to use the mapping service in our application. So, so that our customers like, we people, uh, you know, able to see where the location of the car, what is the location using the map service. Google says, okay, fine. You can use our mapping service. Definitely. Uh, definitely. There are some charges that is fine. But the thing is that now the question, now the question is how Google will give the mapping service, the, the Google map service to Uber. Are they going to give the whole mapping thing to Uber so that they can use it? Absolutely not. Right. Because that would be a security breach. 
so the developer from uber they would be able to access all the google map things right how uh, the google map has been created by the developer in google and all the things like that definitely google does not provide this uh, whole mapping service to uber definitely not but what they do actually they provide a programming interface so the developers in google what they did is that so they have created so many classes and methods so you already understand about the class and objects again i told you the javascript video is very very important uh, to understand the service now developer concept so in the last javascript video i have shown you what is the how class and object works so in there you have seen that you can create class inside of class you can add properties you can add different methods right so what google developer did they have created those classes and methods and they only shared this class and methods to the uber right and that's called the programming interface this programming interface of google google map is sharing to uber uber application right so that's now the application programming interface stands for so very simply when google when uber asks for google that they are going to use the google map service so google says okay we have the api we have a api ready where you know there are methods are mentioned all you need to do so actually in google's website i mean in google map website uh, there are documentation available so that can be used by the developer from uber so they can declare an object with the class and then use different methods so all the details have been uh, there in the google website not only in google website so i'm just talking about google map api that's why i'm saying google website but there are different api available and every api has different documentation level so in the documentation it has been uh, clearly mentioned that how you can call those api and use in your web application or mobile application right also once uber subscribe to the google map service so it's a cloud service actually so once uber is subscribed so uber also receive a key that's known as the api key so for the time being just understand that with the help of key only uber can uh, get the access of google maps api so that's the identification unique identification for uber so only uber has that specific uh, unique key so if they want to use the google map service they have to provide the key in while calling the api from map right so that's how kind of the api works so let me give you another example so suppose i'm creating a, a mobile application where i want people would be able to book their flights right from indigo air asia spicejet whichever company that we have inside india right so they would be able to see you know they would search like from kolkata maybe they are traveling to mumbai or delhi or us maybe so they are searching the location and they are able to see what are the flights available from the air asia data is coming from indigo data is coming so how the data is coming because i am using the api from the indigo and from air india and all for all for this services so i'm just using the api so that my customer who are using my mobile application they can see uh, all the details of the flights that are available i'm fetching the flight details from their website like the uh, from the indigo and spice state their website and showing in my application so that's a different application altogether right the indigo or the air asia so i'm using the details in my application right so that's the two different application talking with each other so that's how api is important now think about it how much how many api that we use on daily basis right every application that we use they are using somewhere some different api from other sources so api is very very common very very common okay so i hope the concept of api is very very clear so here uber is sending the request to google map with the help of api that i need this information of this location or stuff like that with the help of api keys and google map sending the response to the uber back to the uber right and showing the location you can see in the picture so that's the reason we can call the uber application as client and the google map is a server so we are requesting data from the server and server is giving response back to the client which is the uber app right so this is how it works so now let's move on and now let's get into the service now api so api that has been created by the service now developers to make our work easy so like you can see with the help of api on api our work becomes very very easy right we can use so many services from a single application that's a very very good thing in the same way service now api also very very powerful and you would see all the development that we do inside of service now we use some kind of api only so the developers who has created the service now thing they have created this api what kind of api they have created there are mainly five types of api which is the client api 
client mobile api server scoped server global and the rest api so most of the things we are going to cover like client api uh, server scoped and global we will see the different in later videos and also the rest api we would see in our we have a series you know already right uh, the playlist that we are going to start about the rest integration and the integration hub so there i will show you about the rest api right so the developers service now developers they have created this api so that we people can use this api and work and work for our client and we would see more about it in upcoming slide okay so client side api means simply the api that is used in a client side what do i mean by client side client side means like you know in service now uh, the client side mean actually the form so the configuration level of the form so we use client script a uh, ui policy ui action in the you know uh, in the for the client level so all this by using all those things we actually customize button and the form how the form looks like uh, what are the different validation so all these things are the client side things right and we do it with the help of the client side api now i will clear your concept while giving the example of uber i told you that the api that has provided by the google maps that are nothing but the you know the class and objects uh, methods all those things here it is same okay the api that you are going to use that is built by the service now developer the real developer with the help of javascript language right so nothing but they have created different class and inside of that class there are different methods there are different methods and properties that you can use for an example we would see the glide from api although we will have a video altogether separate video for glide from api but uh, this is an example so glide from api that is used to manage form and the form fields in a form maybe it's an inc incident form or change form any form right so like i said api is a collection of class objects methods properties all those things i have already discussed so here from the for the glide from api glide from is the class so glide from is a class that has already been created by the service now developers right and what we are doing is that we are using the g underscore form so if anyone watching this video has any idea about client script they have written client script so maybe they have used g underscore form so g underscore form is a global object so again in my class object video i have told you right how object is created from a class so this is the global object so we don't need to use the class name so everywhere we can use g underscore form that's the direct object and we know that object contains properties and methods right so in the next line you can see g underscore form dot add info message and this is a method where we are passing the string one parameter and it would actually display the message take with free while you while you load the form or i mean the based on the condition where you put like in client script or ui policy that's up to you but this g underscore form dot add info message show a message in the form so this is a method add info message so there are different methods available uh, for g underscore form that we would see like i said in an altogether separate video but all i'm trying to say is that api is a collection of class object and methods so you can see the glide from is a class g underscore from right and we would see another example that is the glide user api again we would have separate video on that but with the help of glide user api you can get all the logged in user details and user roles again if we see you'd be able to understand glide user here is the class again we are using a global object g underscore user so we don't need to declare or create the object so if we have a class for an example we have seen in the javascript video after creating the class we have to make it uh, you know with the help of new uh, statement like uh, let or var uh, a equal to new then the class name like that and then you use the object a dot you know things like that so here when the global object is already created for you so you don't need to declare it anymore so all you need to do is that like g underscore form it's same way g underscore dot username so here you are using the property here you use the method here you are using the property okay so now you understand by the definition of api we are using the same concept in service now also and the client side api can be used in client script ui policy and ui action which is in the client level right because ui action can be uh, occur in both client and server level so this is for the client level next we would see the server side api now server side api are responsible to deal with server side things so so let's see some examples so first one is the glide record api that's the most famous one and we would understand about it in the next video uh, fully about glide record 
and this is used for database operation so although service now never disclose their you know uh, methods of how they are working or what are the technology they are working with but uh, it has been heard that service now is using the mysql database in the back end uh, to store all the deleted data of your uh, what you create maybe a record in incident table so all it's stored in the mysql database so now if you want to access mysql database you have to learn query sql query you have to use the query and then you have to run it so again the service now developers they have brilliant mind and they have created api for us so that we don't need to know about sql all we can do is that we call we create the object and we use different methods of the object so we use the glide record class again and then we have to initialize the object here so like in previous example of client api there you see g underscore form g underscore user that was the global object so we can directly use the object here you need to initiate the object like this so if you have watched the class and object video or if you already have the idea so you know how it is working right so now gr can access all the properties of the class glide record again guys if you are watching this and if you have any confusion on understanding class object methods all those things so please refer to my service now and javascript playlist where i have cleared the concept of the uh, object and class and methods so please watch it out if you have any confusion so we are using now here gr dot at query using a method of the glide record class where you can you are passing the priority and one now how this query is actually working uh, the functionality of the query everything i will discuss in the next video where we will understand about the glide record right for the time being this is fine you are getting the idea of server side api and the next we have the glide system api it is very very useful we are going to use a lot so it provides the information about the system and the current login user we have seen g underscore user in client side api and that is used in the client side only i mean like the, you can use it in client script you can use it in uh, ui policy or ui action client level live system api this is something you only use in the server side and we would see where we can use the server side api in a minute so in the glide system api uh, again the glide's name of the class is glide system and we have a global object here gs so we are going to use gs dot and then method uh, or properties so here we use gs dot yesterday it's a method which actually tell you the date of yesterday and the gmt time and we would explore it again after glide record we would learn about the glide system api right and the server side api are used in business rules ui action server level and the script include right and many more other places also we would see this is all about uh, the exploration of uh, service now api you understand i hope you understand the concept of api and uh, you know how it works so again, if you have any confusion, you can ask me in the comment section. The next video, we will discuss about the Glide Record API. That's a server side API. And we will learn a lot more things, right? So if you find it helpful, hit the like button. If you have any question, you can ask me in the comment. And don't forget to share this video with your friends and families. And don't forget to subscribe my channel. Bye-bye. See you in my next video. Take care.